people talk about manifestation, right? Manifestation is real, but not because your mind manages to magically attract the things you want. I think it just reminds you of what you really want and it allows you to find energy all the time. If you manifest yourself having a perfect physique, you're going to be a lot more motivated in the gym. It's not the thought that makes the physique. It's the gym that makes the physique. However, the manifestation makes you want to go to the gym. So I do believe that if you understood the power of your thoughts, you'd never think negatively ever again. But I think manifestation works in another way. I also think that once you understand all of the bad things and good things that come into your life are a perfect plan from God himself, you're going to be a lot less affected by the bad things. If something bad happens to you, it's part of God's plan. He knows what he's doing. In the end, you're going to be happy it happened. I often ask people, is there anything bad that's happened to you in the past at the time you were distraught about that you now wish didn't even happen? And truthfully, you're like, mm, no, I'm kind of glad it all happened because of. So if you understand you're always going to get there eventually, why be upset about it now, right? If you know in a year from now, you'll be glad it happened. Why be upset about it happening now? You have to be cerebral enough about things. And I think if you take these approaches, if you take the approach of manifesting what you want, so you're constantly motivated and understanding all the bad things that happen to you are just a lesson and one day you're going to get over it. It's pretty easy to be a happy, contented, balanced person. I don't think there's any serious magic to happiness. I think it's a choice and it's pretty easy to do. The, I think the unhappiest people in the world don't have any struggle at all. You often find that people who are struggling but know exactly what they're supposed to do, if they're getting up every day and they're grinding and they're working hard and they don't have what they want yet, but they believe they're going to get it and they're trying their very best and they're dedicating themselves, they're very happy. Perhaps the people who were born with a trust fund and unlimited money and have no struggles in their life and they have no objectives to try and conquer are truly the miserable ones. Perhaps we're built for struggle. Perhaps the human mind and soul and spirit is built to struggle. Perhaps we're built to suffer. I know me as a man, I'm happiest when I suffer. Why did the emperors we discussed earlier on constantly try and expand their empires? Because they, they wanted, wanted to struggle. Yeah. They wanted difficulty. Would you play a video game if it was easy? If you could never die? I mean, cheats get boring pretty quick. You play it because it's hard. That's the whole point of it. You're supposed to struggle with it. You're supposed to suffer with it. So I think a lot of people confuse these things and they sit and say, ah, this is merely making me unhappy. Or, you know, if I didn't have any, if I woke up and everything was just perfect, that'd be great for a few weeks. But if you just wake up and nothing ever goes wrong, I think that'd be quite depressing in its own way. That's the beauty of life is the up and the down because there's no light without dark. So if you understand these things, it's pretty easy to be happy. If I say something, I stick to it. I believe that your word is your bond and you should stick to everything you say. So for me, the simplest life hack is to make sure I never see myself as a liar. If I say something, I'm going to do it. So if I say I'm going to run a marathon, I now have the energy to run the marathon because I don't want to break my word to myself, hmm. which the hack to that is I don't need the energy to run the marathon. I need the energy to say I'll run a marathon, which is a lot less. But once I've said it, I have to do it. Does that make sense? So if I look at something and I don't want to do it and I think that looks too hard to do, I'll tell Tristan or I'll tell someone close to me I'm going to do it. So now I have to do it. That's how I'll do things. So I'll we can take a very simple example. There's 10 rocks to move and I don't want to move them. They're too heavy. But if I say to someone, I can move all those rocks, I'm going to move all those rocks. Now I have to move them. Otherwise I'm a liar, especially. And I, that's also easy because of my social circle, because they'll call me out on it. You said you're going to move those rocks. So now I have to do it. So I don't need the energy to get the work done. I need the energy to tell people I'm going to do the work and I have to keep my word to myself which maybe some people find strange, but I think it's pretty simple. You have to be the kind of person who doesn't lie to anybody, including yourself, especially yourself. Don't lie to yourself ever. You have to be brutally honest with yourself all the time. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to make the correct move on the chessboard. If you think you're better than you are or worse than you are, you're going to make mistakes. You need to know exactly where you are and all of your capabilities, which once again is feedback, like we said before. I think that getting rich when you're young as a man is probably one of the worst things that can happen. You don't want to get rich to your late 20s. You want to spend all your 20s broke, broke, and grinding. broke, grinding, training, making girls like you for who you are and your backpack, <laughs> being funny, being interesting. That's what you need to do. I spent my 20s winning world title fights and living in girls' houses who paid. They were fucking cooking for me. I don't have any money. Yeah. But th that's how I grew up. Yeah. If I had money at 18, 19, I would have skipped so many experiences and so many hard lessons. I'd be a fraction of the man I am today. So I don't like the idea of kids just gambling and getting lucky. Yeah. Now, that's the worst thing that can happen to a young man. He's skipping all the struggle, all the pain and suffering he's going to attempt to skip with money. He's going to end up suffering more in the end, mm -hmm. but he's going to just lose, lose, lose. What is fun?
Like, I don't know what's fun anymore. I feel like the world's kind of the same wherever you are. People often say to me, what's Romania like? And I say, well, yeah, it's really it's beautiful. It's got beautiful nature. It's got amazing history. And they're like, what's it like living there? Well, you either go out for dinner or you stay home. In LA, you go out for dinner or you stay home. In Tokyo, you go out for dinner or you stay home. Like, there's nothing to do besides go out to eat or stay in your house. You can go clubs and those kind of things, but I'm definitely certainly past all of that. Mm. Masculine competition is fun. I think what's fun as a man is being the best at anything, right? So my girl will say to me, why do you work all the time? All you do is work. I said, no, because I have to be the richest man on the planet. That's why I want as much money as possible. She goes, you don't, you have enough money. I was like, I know, but it's a game. It's a video game. I want a high score. Where do you find competition now? Well, I live, I live with guys, I live with my friends and we make sure that it's constant and endless competition because we live together. So if my brother does hundred pushups, I have to do 101, which means he'll do 102 and then I'll do 103 and we'll just call each other names all day until thousands of pushups have been done. So I live in a very masculine environment because masculine competition drives you forward. We all work together. We all work inside of the company and we're very successful. But uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't really know what's fun anymore. I, I feel like I just feel like nothing's really fun anymore besides working hard or you need an activity which is so adrenaline filled that it distracts you, which is why I love driving fast cars and fighting because it's the only time I'm not thinking about work. Yeah, so I, I, I'm i happy just to get my work done and, and maybe I'm starting to get old after all. I'm 37, I'm getting old. I see my kids, I do my emails, I, I train hard, maybe go for a drive with the car, maybe get a coffee. That's it. Oh, he doesn't go to the gym because of X, Y, Z or he feels down. That's fine, but he needs to go to the gym. So we can talk about all the reasons he doesn't go for the forever. That's a very long, lifelong conversation, but he needs to go. So we've removed the, the needs and we've removed the, the hard facts and the duty and the honor and the commitments, and we've replaced it all with this subjectiveness. And there's nothing more subjective than feelings. How I feel inside on a day I say I'm happy might be the exact same way someone feels inside on the day they say they're sad because their expectation might be higher for happy because they only think they're happy when they're running around laughing like a child. Whereas I think I'm happy as long as I'm not distraught. I'm happy all the time because I've nothing to cry about. I don't really give a shit how the men I know feel because they have things they need to do. And as long as they're going to do them like they're supposed to do them, I don't really care that much. And if they were to come to me and say they feel down about something and they had a good reason, I wouldn't be insensitive. That's fine. But we're talking about a death of a family member or something. And we're talking about one or two days until you, you just get back to life. You have things to do. Action solves all things. Time solves all things. God solves all things. And to sit around and be obsessed with feelings is highly feminine. I don't like that energy around me. I feel sad. I don't cry. Just get on with life. It's, it's, it's the adult mentality. So I'm not sure. This uh, Feelings don't cross my mind, if that makes sense. They don't cross my mind because they don't affect my day. So it doesn't change anything. So I have other things to think about. It's like, what is a man? Truthfully, a man, I, I, I believe, is being able to do the things that are hard or do things you don't want to do because you're supposed to do them. I think that's what a man's always been. A man is supposed to be strong. He needs to be strong. So he has to become strong. That's his job. A man is supposed to be brave. It's not that you can't feel fear. It's that you have to be brave. Oh, an attacker's here. I'm afraid, but I'm a man. So I will go and engage the attacker. It is my job. And now we're teaching men, oh, you don't have to do what you don't feel like doing. You can do what you do feel like doing. And they somehow think that this is dismantling toxic masculinity when in fact it's actually doing the opposite because men are born with an innate propensity for violence. When you tell men to act out their feelings, you have some little idiot who's been on drugs his whole life. You should be being taught stoicism, not this garbage. Mm -hmm. And the reason they're sitting at home, even if they don't admit to these ailments, wondering why they're so unhappy all the time is because you're fighting an internal battle. Your monologue is different in your mind from what your spirit truly wants. You want to be respected. You want to be strong. You want to stand up for what you know is right. You want to be a man and you're just too afraid to engage the enemy. So you're going to self destruct. You're going to turn on yourself. There's a fire inside of you. There's a fire inside of absolutely every man. And you can either direct it at your enemy and do your very best to destroy him, or it's going to burn inside of you and eat you alive. You have to make a choice. The cowardice that you feel that prevents you from engaging the enemy is your biggest is the biggest betrayal because now you're just engaging yourself. The battle's certain either way. So I strongly recommend you find who the enemy is and direct your efforts towards their destruction as opposed to sitting there allowing yourself to self-immolate. The thing that people struggle with most, especially men, is that we only learn lessons the hard way. That's the problem. You want to be good at learning lessons the easy way, which is really paying attention and making sure the feedback you're receiving, you need to be perceptive to it so that 
it doesn't have to be so hard hitting. You need to be the kind of person who goes out for a drive and his wheels slide a bit and he slows down. But what people typically do is they go out for a drive, their wheels slide a little bit, they continue and then they crash. And then they realize I should have slowed down once they hit a tree. They only learn the hard way. But when they got the easy little bits of feedback, they didn't want to pay attention to them because it was easy and they thought they got away with it. And it's the same with a relationship and the same with everything else. There's little bits of feedback. You go, ah, okay, this is going to be a problem later on if I continue. But they ignore that part. They wait for it all to blow up and go wrong. And then they learn. So men only learn the hard way. And I guess you can speed things up if you try and learn the easy way. But sooner or later, hard things are going to happen anyway. God's going to make sure of that. So you're never going to be able to avoid that car crash one way or another. Something's going to happen and it's going to hit you. And then it's your chance to prove to God you are the person you say you are and to just be cerebral enough about things to understand that everything comes to an end one day unless you die. And if you die, then it doesn't matter anymore. So, you know, it, it doesn't, they can throw you in solitary confinement. It's going to end one day or you're going to die. And when you die, it doesn't matter anymore. So there's no point in being completely distraught about it. You have to find the joy in the crack in the sunlight through the roof. And that's, that's life. What else can you do?